Right, are you ready? I've got the lights on. You're in for a right treat. Have you ever seen that final scene of the um, original Texas Chainsaw Massacre when the leather-faced guy comes running out when they go in the basement? That's all I can fucking think of, walking around this place. So, along with this lovely property, I've got this double-use Dyson vacuum cleaner that is also an important door wedge, but be careful not to fucking knock it. So I think if that door shuts, we're in here forever. So, believe it or not, this pub was fucking trading up to about 18 months ago, and I can't even get in the kitchen. Let's turn my torch on, but if you are hungry, Dan, there's a lovely pot of curry sauce there. So, uh, this property is completely buggered, and that's why it was given to me for next to nothing. But I've got the lights on, so at least we can see. And there's a beep here just alerting Great Yarmouth to Dan and Dan from Norwich. You know, this is for local people and not outside people. But what we've got is a huge, great big building. It's not without its um, issues, as you can see. But there's a huge amount of potential. And this is typical of old pubs. Shit built on shit, built on shit for years. So nothing is ever repaired correctly. Poor quality accommodation, damp walls, rotten floors. They're just covered up with cheap laminate floor. And as you walk along the floor, you can see the lumps and the bumps of where the damp is coming through and it's making all the wood and all the floor bow and bend. But what is a new surprise for me this time round, and we're not going to get too close because it's beeping and it's so loud, is the seal that has all the through, and it's because the roof is completely perished. So the leak, and we'll see it as we go into the upper floors, has just literally been trickling down for years, and the old roof and ceiling has just collapsed. And the light right on cue just flickered off, just for us. But this is absolutely fine, because this is what we want. We don't want a brand new property that, and pay a premium for. We want properties like this. Properties that are next to nothing to buy that to the standard retail investors and purchasers they are running scared because they look like there's a huge amount of work but at the end of the day it's all just a means to an end if it's going to cost me x added to y which is my purchase price and it's going to be worth so much more then we're just going to crack on with the work so some of the great features about this pub is one is the bar this is actually a really good quality relatively new cladded timber bar area. Building bars is actually a really expensive part of the refurb of any bar, but this is just gonna need a varnish and sand and maybe even a lick of paint. And we're gonna try and keep all the wood panel as well. It looks really shitty now, it prints on walls which are falling down, but once we get it off and get the walls repaired, back it up, just then pissed over again. Um, the, the panel is going to be a key feature of this. I think once we've got the floor all up and all sorted as well, we're going to put nice limestone natural slabs down. Don't know though, maybe a wood floor. I'm sort of discovering new areas as we walk through here, so this might be another Texas, Texas Chainsaw Massacre room. It might not be. Dan, just be ready with the camera to bash anyone back who comes and attacks me. I think this leads to the garden. Oh, you're in luck. It's locked. I haven't got a key. <laughs> what, what do you make all that is on the door, Dad? It's disgusting. Isn't it? <laughs> That's. Do you think people have got pissy hands opening the door? What the fuck is that? I'm going to open the door from up here. So, these old pubs, you can tell how good the beer is or how good the tourists are. And this is just exactly what you would expect the cheapest, nastiest place to have a piss and get out of. Now, I personally, even though this is going to be community wet-led, price-driven, we're going to make these toilets really nice because the toilets set the whole scene for the whole pub. And you can kind of compensate on having smaller rooms, smaller areas, smaller toilets by making them really nice inside. Now, let's see if the women's toilets are any... Oh, do you know I like this wallpaper? Very nice. Oh, see... That's just the men's toilets, which are completely... That's discriminative, I think. Leave the men's toilets so they're completely shit and give the women nice toilets. I think this is all about equal opportunities. Mind you, they're not that great. Let's not, let's not look down there. <laughs> 
More of this on the door, Dan. As the women are just as bad. <laughs> okay, we're going to head upstairs now, which is where all the true delights are. And then on the way back down, we might have built up enough courage to go down in the cellar. I've actually never been down there. Even though we're laughing and joking, this area here where we've just come up is crucial because the access to upstairs is separate from the main bar. We could have a separate access. That is one of the key nuggets to look for when you're looking at these old commercial properties and pubs. If you can separate the residential upper floors to the commercial by giving them their own access, that is how you're gonna create huge amounts of value. And you can even split the title, which means you get a residential value for the flat and a commercial valuation for the commercial or trade and pub. Do you know, I'm seeing signs actually that someone has started to do some work in here. So you've got the floor, not very well, by the way, you've got the floor in there, you've got some emergency lighting and some emergency exits all linked to the fire alarm. I wouldn't be surprised if we'll see more of that, but we, it's a quirky corridor, not great for residential flat. And, that, and that, that's the, the option I've got here. I've got option one, which is conversion to residential apartments and sell them or rent them, or retain uh, the commercial use by having lettable rooms. But the, the flow doesn't work very well for residential. It's not a nice place to live. But it's acceptable in terms of like a hotel stay. I, I think that's going to work quite well. Oh, they've left me some keys. Brilliant. But all joking aside, apart from the windows in this room, none of that door is. This is not too bad. This would be quite nice, uh, like a, a self-contained like like studio or one bedroom apartment type of thing. You got your step up there, I can see maybe there, I think there is a kitchen through there. Oh yeah, that's just a cupboard. Oh yeah, so you got a bathroom and a kitchen through here. So this, is a, this would work as a self-contained flat, not in its current form. Obviously this is the uh, manager's accommodation. And I think it's always a, it's always a bit revolting when you think about how the manager lived, how the toilets were kept, and they were serving food in this place. I mean, no, it doesn't matter how big of a company you are, even if you're a one-man band, the standard of cleanliness and quality needs to be maintained. Otherwise, it's just a slow spiral to start. And you hear about pubs, huge amounts of costs, can't make any money, and then you buy the freehold and you come visit and you see this sort of thing and you, can, you think, well, it's not the fact that you weren't making any money, it's the fact that you weren't selling enough beer because you couldn't attract customers because the quality of what you were serving wasn't good enough. Yeah, <laughs> Dan just tries to make love to this pipe. Is that the right size, Dan? <laughs> so you can see someone's even had a go of plaster. We've got plaster on the ceilings, plaster on the walls. Which is strange, it's been owned by the same company for like 40, 50 years, and it's definitely not them. So a licensee or a renter has had a go at doing something with this place, which is which is fair enough. I just, this is crazy. It's like, what came first, the egg or the chicken? Well, in this case, they've tried to scramble something before they've even fucking laid the egg. Because you haven't fixed the roof and you're trying to plaster a seat, it's crazy. There's a toilet in this cupboard here, which means the plumbing is there for the ensuite rooms. So, when you consider and add an ensuite route, the key issue is where do you get the waste? Where do you get the water feeds from? But I think in this property, we're pretty much there. So we're directly above that collapsed ceiling in the bar area. You can see the water is just pretty much gushing down the center of this building from the roof. And it has been for a very long time. This is completely saturated, completely fucked. And is, there's no point in doing any work to any of this until we fix that roof. But again, you can see they're trying to plaster over it. You cannot polish a turd. They don't want to poke it too hard. That's, so, that's like soaking wet. So, so clearly this roof is just pouring out oh, yeah, buckets of water up here. It's, well, it's water or someone's had a big piss. The first thing we need to do in this property is 100% get scaffolding up and get it re-roofed. There's, there's no point in considering doing anything else until that's done. Even ripping it out is pointless because it's not 100% safe. 
with all the wood and everything being wet and then you stop ripping out and another downpour of rain, it's just not worth the risk. So that's definitely the first thing that we need to do. Now, first of all, what is wrong with this property? Well, well the roof is ready to fall in and there is damp everywhere caused by a lot of ventilation issues, but mainly the problem with the roof. There is absolutely all sorts of growth, whether it's plants, trees through the gutters, and mold just everywhere. The property has been neglected for decades, meaning anything that looks half decent is still gonna need to be replaced. So this is a back to bare brick operation, starting from the absolute basics. The bonus is that it's such a large building, it has so many different opportunities. Now in the upper floors, it's already residential. So it ca it's a case of reconfiguring it to flats or even having more lettable ensuite rooms, which we can rent per night as service accommodation or even a large HMO. The drawback with that is that we won't get the residential value we'll get from separate flats. On the ground floor, this is where the cherry is, and this is one of the reasons why we bought the property. It's a large open plan bar area, which yes, is really tired, but once we get it trading, it's gonna produce enough income to warrant the level of investment. And the beauty is that it's gonna quadruple in value. We paid 120,000, it's gonna be worth upwards of 500,000 once it's all done.